Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're taking our LED use to a whole new level. This time, we're gonna walk through two different ways to connect multiple LEDs together. As always, it's important to know your abilities and limitations when you're working with something like electronics. Understand your own capabilities, and if there's something you don't know, do a little research first. And to help you out with some of the first parts of that search for knowledge, you can check out the two videos linked in the description below. In that first video, we covered a lot of the basics about LEDs and then moved on to the second video in which we discussed how to set up using resistors to manage power. Today, we're gonna to use that knowledge to start stringing together multiple LEDs. You can take a quick look at the picture to remember which side the positive is on. And as always, I tend to like to hook up resistors to that positive side. Let's start off by taking a look at what it means to connect LEDs in a series connection. In this basic setup, the power is actually gonna flow from positive to negative through each LED one at a time. When I'm working on small projects, I often connect the positive lead of one LED directly to the negative lead of the other. In this setup, the more LEDs you add together, the more voltage you're gonna need, and that's because the voltage drop adds up. It's sort of a simple little math problem, and I think an example will help. Using the same numbers from the past videos, we're going to assume three LEDs that each needs two volts and 20 milliamps to operate. So you see in a series connection, the voltage requirement adds up, but the milliamp need stays the same. But when we connect in parallel, it's a little bit different. In this setup, each LED is getting the same amount of power at the same time. And because of this, our voltage requirement behaves very differently. In parallel, you don't need more volts, you need more current, and that means more milliamps. Essentially, your voltage drop remains constant. So let's return to our example. We have the same three LEDs with the same requirements for two volts and 20 milliamps, but this time, our voltage requirement stays at two volts, but our milliamps add up to 60. So at this point, you're probably asking yourself, which approach should you use? As you see on the screen, there's definitely positive and negative factors to both. When working in series, you're definitely gonna need more voltage, but if you're working in parallel, you're also gonna need some more resistors to keep them safe. Most of the negative comments I hear about parallel use is because people are trying to use one resistor to protect all of the LEDs being used. Either approach is really good if you're using a few LEDs, but you know what? There are a lot more complicated ways you can hook them up to if you wanna use a lot of LEDs. But I'm definitely getting ahead of myself. That's gonna be a video somewhere down the road. If you haven't guessed already, I actually do like to use the parallel approach when making a lot of my projects. And I wanna show you a couple of examples of how I basically set up the ground wire, the positive wire, the resistors, and the LEDs. As you see here, I'm testing out these configurations on a breadboard before I actually make them permanent. And what I like to do, and the reason I like this setup for a parallel approach, is because I'll take each LED and connect it to the resistor first. Then when I have a bunch of LED resistor packets, I'll start connecting them all together. Come back and check out my future videos and I'll show you how I set these up. In fact, I'll also show you how I use a breadboard for testing all my connections. And we'll make some cool, fun projects too. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.